Let us open with our morning prayer, praying together. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem, where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to the online Sunday worship service for the Born Katamit West Falmouth Parish. Our first reading will be from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the highest. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord in highest heavens and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maiden together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their God, Praise the Lord. Let us pray. It is with joy that we give these gifts today as we humbly acknowledge the gift that God has given us, his only child. For he so loved us that he sent a child to teach us, walk among us, and save us. 
These gifts today are only a small portion of what we owe God for what he gives us. We are truly grateful. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Colossians. So, chosen by God for his new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive us, as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cults of Cultivate thankfulness and let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing in your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the master. Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. May God's wonder be revealed to us through the mystery of these words. Merry Christmas to everyone. After several weeks of Advent, which is a season of anticipation, we are now in the Christmas season. Congratulations, you made it. We now, you can now take a breath and experience the joy of Christmas, which is why we open this morning singing Joy to the World. Some of you may now feel that Christmas is over and you can move on to New Year's and New Year's Eve parties and all the planning that goes with that. But wait, there's more. Before you move on, take a breath and experience that true Christmas feeling in your heart. Understanding the difference between Advent and Christmas can take some thought and a bit of attitude adjustment. It's like waiting and waiting, and then there's this explosion of magic as you move forward from waiting, from waiting and being pregnant or waiting for the baby to come and the birth, holding your breath until you hear the first cries. If you listen carefully to your heart, you can actually hear and feel the change from Advent to Christmas. You can feel the difference inside yourself. The day after Christmas, after the hustle and bustle of anticipation has died down, is a good day to take time to breathe and listen to God, and that is today. It feels like we so easily blend Advent and Christmas together that we don't fully experience the gift that has been given Many of you have experienced the joy of birth, either uh, yourself or as a family member, either the birth of your children, your grandchildren, or a child of a friend or family member. After nine months of waiting, at the moment it tr happens, it truly does feel like a miracle. I always remember that I was thinking, that when I was giving birth, that I was about to meet somebody I had not known before, but I would, would be the most important person in my life. It was a little scary, and I really, I really was anxious about it and wary. Would I like them? How did I know? Would I love them? Who were they? Would they be good people in the world, kind and caring, someone I would want to be with and someone I would be proud of? This is a little like Advent and Christmas. Advent is waiting to meet a person who will be more important to you than any other. Christmas is the reality. Having a relationship with Christ and the responsibility of walking with him can seem almost overwhelming. And all these thoughts and reactions fall on a baby at Christmas, an innocent little creature that looks up at you so trusting and loving. Can you imagine what Mary and Joseph were thinking? They had, so much, they had to have so much faith that God was with them, just as we do. All children are a gift from God, and Jesus was a very special gift. 
as in Advent, we can be ex we can be excited anticipating his birth. At Christmas time, we can wonder why God gave us such a gift. In the church year, we tend to start almost immediately preparing for Lent and Easter and moving through Jesus' life, skipping over about 30 years of, of his time of his to the time of his death and resurrection, compacting and not really giving us time to absorb the lessons that we are to learn from his birth. We are on to just the next celebration. But before we go there, let's take a few minutes to stop and think why God gave us this gift without jumping too far ahead. Jesus was born, we all know that. The story has been told for more than 2,000 years. We can tell the story of the manger, the shepherds, the wise men, the angels, the animals, King Herod. Some people were afraid of the baby, some people were in awe of the baby, and others put the hope of the world on him. That's a lot for a small child and his earthly parents. If you close your eyes, you might be able to imagine yourself as one of the people at the stable. You can feel the dust and the straw and smell the animals. Why did God do this? Why did he send his son in the form of a baby? It would be easy to say to save us, but in Paul's writing to the Colossians, he sets forth additional thoughts for us to consider. In our reading this morning, Colossians 3, verses 12 to 17, Paul is writing to the church in Colossae. Paul was probably under house arrest in Rome at the time he wrote the letter, and the church in Colossae was in turmoil. The Christian church was very young, and not everyone agreed about the rules that should be in place for believers. Some of the members came from the Jewish community, thinking it was best to follow the Jewish laws while also following Jesus. Some were Greeks who came from worshiping other gods in different ways. And some were just curious. Some may have been dissenters from their previous religions and looking for a new way. So they were in a bit of turmoil themselves. They weren't all shepherds and wise men or others who'd witnessed the birth of Jesus or seen him teaching in person and were believers because they had experienced Jesus. And remember the Colossa was in, pre was in present day Turkey, a long way from Bethlehem and a long way from Rome where Paul was. The early church congregations were small but growing and many were experiencing growing pains. The expectations of the new converts varied and it was not easy to meet all their expectations. They were also being led by people who meant well and were trying, but had various skills. They didn't know all the answers to the questions that, they were, that were presented to, to them. Dissension was rife and external pressures challenging their beliefs were great. The leader in the church of Colossa, Epaphras, turned to Paul for advice and guidance, as did many early church communities. But there was a problem because there was no FaceTime or telephones or texting or Zoom or even a plane or a car or train to meet him. He had to walk or take a boat and ride a donkey to get to Rome, over 1,300 miles away. As I've been reading the Bible this year, I have been struck by the distances traveled by people in this region and the time between an incident and advice and resolution. It was not as instantaneous as it is now. Paul had to be thoughtful and careful about what he was saying and hoping he was meeting what they needed. Paul listened to Epaphras, knowing that he deeply cared, and Epaphras deeply cared for the spiritual growth of the community, and Paul thought very highly of him and his abilities. He wrote a letter to the community to support what Epaphras was, reached, was teaching to the Colossian church. In this letter, he asked the church community to stop and think who God wants them to be. He tells them to stop listening to those from the town and surrounding areas who would try to cause dissension, who would insist that they would follow all the Jewish laws, who would lead them astray with ideas and thoughts that would diminish and diluted what Jesus had been teaching. He warned them about false teaching, and he very clearly outlined why Jesus came to earth. He writes, and now on, from now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So chosen by God for this new life of love, 
dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. This is the reason for the baby in the manger, to come to us and teach us these lessons. Marion Swords, a professor of New Testament studies at the Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary says, in essence, all of Colossians celebrates the gift of God through Jesus Christ to the community of faith. That gift is a new context, Christ, and a new power, love for living. When you look at a newborn child, you see love. You feel love, all your focus is on him, and he is more important than you are. When you see him, you have compassion, you feel kindness and humility, you must be strong and have discipline to be with him. You must be even tempered and be content with second place, as he is much more important than you. And you must work to forgive quickly and completely. And the reason you can do this is the pure love you have for the child. God is showing us the very basic elements of life and reminding us of them through the birth of Jesus Christ. It is so easy as we move through Advent and Christmas, rushing towards Easter and the next celebration, that we forget the very basic teachings that God wants us to remember. Christmas has a magic to it that we can see in the face of the children as they learn about the birth of Jesus, look at the manger, listen to carols, and hear the stories of his life. They have a simple and pure faith in what they see and hear and freely give their love. The childhood magic of Christmas fades as we reach adulthood with all the trappings of a celebration and all the responsibilities that come with living. This fall, a friend, of, a friend related to my husband an experience of a parent walking past the room of her about one-year-old child and looking in to see her four-year-old standing by the crib talking with his sibling. She stopped to listen and hear him say to the baby, can you tell me about God? I'm starting to forget. Children are God's gift to us. He delivers them to us. And what they can teach us about the faith and God's love and what he expects from us can often be learned from the innocence of their birth. Take yourself back to the stable, close your eyes and imagine yourself there again and then look into the eyes of the baby, and you will see the face of God. He is with us. Let us stop during this Christmas season and remember what God is expecting of us and why he sent the baby to us. Let us worship and sing to him, and most importantly, love him and talk with him. If we are not careful, we may start to forget. Now also in Paul's writings, he says, and sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in our lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Let us all stand now and let us sing our next hymn. Great.
Let us take a few minutes to search our hearts and pray for those that we hold dear. Nurturing God, remember the exile of the Holy Family and Herod's slaughter of the children. We remember all who need our sustaining love. Hear our prayers for the church and the community in the world. Today we pray for those who are on our prayer list in each of our churches. We also pray for those people around our community who are in need of prayer, some who don't even know they're in need of prayer. We pray for uh, our first responders. We pray for those people who are in our, our medical community who are serving us so well and are working so hard. We pray for our military people around the world who are keeping us safe. And we also pray for, uh, we pray for our pastor, Karen Lily Pax, our district superintendent, David Calhoun, and our bishop, Suda Devahar. May they find renewal in this season. Grant that all people may hear together the song of joy and find their homes in the garden of justice and hope, that we may experience the fullness of life, which is your will for all, in the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. this week, let every detail in your lives, words, actions, and whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Amen.